Hi, hi folks, it's Steve here. Welcome to the start of our new online term. This is our art class. We are starting with a little project based around a Japanese concept called Hirameki. Now, I've put some details in the description so you'll be able to kind of learn a little bit more about it. But essentially, it's the same idea as looking up at clouds in the sky and picking out for you see. So what we're going to do is like create clouds, if you like, on paper using paint and other maybe non-traditional materials. And then we're going to take a step back, have a look at what we've made, pick out on the images and then draw them. What I'm going to do just now is start off with the basics. So making our water doing paint to mark the splodges in the paper. Later on, what I'll do is show you some finished drawings that I've done based on what we're going to mark today. So, didn't I feel too lost just now? All we're looking to do is mark some marks in the paper. Now, the key to this is to mark it as runny as possible. And that's why I've got this jar of water here. Lots of paints I've picked, it's colours I like using. I find with this that you don't want to be using too much colours because you kinda, you'll kind you lose only kind of like finer details of the images we're going to pick out eventually. So maybe pick three, four, five colours that you like and stick with that just now until you get a flavour of what we're doing. The key to this is to make it really watery. So you're just wanting a little bit of paint and a lot of water. If you do it the other way around, you get these big thick splodgy marks in the paper and it's really hard to maybe to pick out images from it. If I'm going to start with just a little wee bit with a yellow paint, there's some here, and literally, if you can see, it's just a wee wee splodge. Put it in here, in fact, we'll just dip out the brush in, just like that. And as you can see, that's pretty runny. And we'll just do it with a few of the others. Really straight ahead, and you can't go wrong with this as long as I said it's really wa watery. A little bit this orangey, it's my favourite colour just now. All my paintings are coming out with this all uh, over it. I'm like, no apologies, it's a great colour. There we go, that's a lot runnier again. And I hope everybody's managed to secure themselves a nice little art space in your house or forever you're holed up at just now. A good tip. Um, I'll maybe in fact make a video about how to make a mace to your house because I lived in a little flat before and there was a few things I did that made it a lot more um, usable for an artist. Maybe some ideas you're not thought of. And, and likewise, if you've got some good ideas or you've managed to come up with something really inventive in your house, please let us know. You can comment on this video, you can send us an email, you can nip back to the Facebook page for you got this link for and Leave a comment. Ross and Kev will happily share that with me. There we go. Skyry pink. Look at that. Now, put that in here. There we go. I want to hear a bit more pink. Like that. Right. So, that's a hard work done, and that wasn't too taxing, I hope for you is. Now, the key to having a, a good art space is it's it's some way far, it doesn't matter if you mark too much of a mess. So, I hope you need to this on a, a towel on your living room carpet. Here's a messy bit. So, paper. You can use anything. I like paper because it's nice to draw on. Afterwards, you can use cardboard and maybe a marker pen for doing the, the actual hirameki, but for me, good old A4 and a biro does a job fine. Now, right, you can see that clear? So what we're going to do is just splodge us on. Now, there's no rules to this, but you're not wanting an hour hill page. You're wanting maybe five or six separate splodges of paint with a few different colours on them. And that's why you've got more scope for the kind of drawings that are going to come after. Now, don't worry if this isn't making sense, by the way, it will. Now, there's no technique to this. You can just splodge it down like that. You can flick it. You can pour it a little bit if you want. If you're going to be pouring it, put them in separate containers because it'll be chaos otherwise. And then once you've got one colour down, you've got another splodge maybe. Just to 
muck a mix and for it dries the colours will separate a little bit and that's when you start to pick out maybe images there we go now these are all looking the same so I'm going to try and do a few brush strokes instead I'm going to move over here there's a proper big splat there maybe a brush stroke here and some splats in it so what I'm thinking is there's not enough colour variation in this so I'm going to mix up another in that gives reckon some blue I think some blue now for on a I'll use a tour of the art shed somewhere, somewhere later, do the line on the term and you'll see that chaotic approach I have to my materials, which is fine, there's no rules. Francis Bacon, one of my favourite artists, um, if you research his, his art studio online, it literally looked like a bomb had gone off in it, and then a tornado had run through it, and then it had been burgled, and then set on fire, probably. And uh, he was a phenomenal painter. Right, so here's some blue. So this will just add a bit of some extra. I'm going to drop it into an air. And an air. Put a line air. See, no rules to it. You can't go wrong. And I'm going to start a whole new couple of blue beans there. Now, you don't do too much. But you want enough to keep your brain stimulated. And a nice a few mixes of colours is very good as well. There we go. And I'm gonna put a few random dreeps on and ah. So so far I've never really seen nothing popping out of my but once the paints are dry, you'll be you'll be very surprised as to how your mind goes with it. Only if it was here like maybe I don't know, a few times back, maybe middle of last year we uh, we did this as a big group project and everybody had different interpretations of each other's sheets and could see different images in it uh, it might be fun for we're back at work proper and for news are back in a classroom proper that we mark these individually and then photocopy them and then everybody can share the same sheet and we'll see how different the designs come out once they're they're all done there we go. Right, I'm finished because I'm getting carried away now and I'm enjoying the painting and I'm starting to just add and add to it. So that's two sheets done. I've loads of paint left, so I'm just going to switch this so I find to dry. It's a bony day, so I'll maybe get them outside. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to plug outside. I hope these are all getting there. Getting some fresh air, stretching your legs because it's important. If you mark these and they're struggling to dry, maybe put them in a tray, put them in a plate and tuck them out when you're out for your work. That'll help them dry quicker. Maybe plonk them down somewhere nice and tuck 10 minutes to enjoy your sights. Now, here we go, we're off again. I've got a kind of mix of colours now, so when they dry, you'll start to see funny lines coming out and, and all the rest. And this in itself is really relaxing it's really settling just marking some art your brain just likes to focus on one thing at a time and if you're in a nice peaceful environment you maybe got some music on it you like and a cup of tea beside you and it'll just easily wander into this creative practice and tuck you off the only thing it might be bothering you it's a beauty of art isn't it the escape it gives you now there we go these are a bit small I might see about joining them up. Here we go. Where are we? Not even that. Now these are getting a bit darker because I've been mixing all the paint, so we're wanting something. I think some some bright yellow. I think is what's needed. Just for the last. Spoolish on these. There we go. That's me. I like it. Just to give them a bit of depth once it all dries. Now, draw a 
button do now. Right, I think we're done. Hi, hi folks, welcome back. Hopefully everything has gone to plan and you have something resembling these. I'm actually really happy with the way they came out. I can see lots of kind of funny images in them, quite varied, different colours, and as you can see, the different sort of layers and lines that come out when it dries. And that's a thing that can make us really pick out some like fine details and get some fancy looking images in a go. So, right away, when these were dry and I was having a little looky and I spotted this one. Now, I don't know what you see, but for me, and I've got an old felt tip suit here. Hopefully you can see this quite clearly. If not, bear with me. So the outline alone, to me, gave it the look of some long-necked creature. Now, my neck of the woods, this was called a Diplodocus, but I have heard others say it's a Diplodocus. Either way, it's a long-necked dinosaur and this scene's wearing a crown. Now, this is where you can hear a bit of fun. Because you can fill in only the blanks yourself and it just brings it to life. You can mark some nice lines in the neck. Like that. And I'm going to give this in a tongue. Like a snake. Because, fast to say, dinosaurs in all days didn't have great long snake tongues. There you go. That easy. For you, yours will be completely different and you'll see different things at Oniwai. For instance, it could have been a seahorse. Yeah, Oni multitude of stuff it could um, become. But this is it. This is the beauty of Hidemeki. You have a look at cement, give it a bit of time, let it sink in, and then you just draw it on. It can't go wrong. There's no rules to it. It's fit you see. is It's fit you see. I'm just going to look you through the scene here. Right away, the shape of it, to me... Looks like one of my favourite creatures in the sea, a deep sea angler. Now that's a fancy fish with a light on the end of a stalk and it just sits in the dark with this little light glow in. It lets um, little creatures dry in and then it gets ahead of them. And I'll get some spiky teeth in there. A little glow off. There you go. The deep sea angler. Easy as that. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope it's been useful and fun. I'll tell you with something you can do just to get yourself into a kind of creative mindset and ah, oh, um, it's not too complex, but it gets all the neurons firing and can get you kind of warmed up for any other projects you're working on. Please comment back. You can comment a YouTube uh, video if you have access to the channel, if you've subscribed. Certainly on Facebook, please let Kevin Ross know how you got on. If you're confident to share your pictures, please do. It'd be great to see them. If not, put them aside and we can discuss it once uh, Reach Out comes back proper because we're thinking about putting together a big art exhibition with everything that we've done through this time. Certainly some sort of brochure or folder uh, document or nothing that you have made. So it would be great if you could at least put them aside on your phone for a later date and it's something we could maybe uh, pull together as a group once normality resumes. Right everybody, that's our first art class out of the way. Any ideas for future ones, anything you'd like to do, let us know and I will endeavour to put it together for you. Okay, have a great day. Cheers folks.